But, you know, I've got to tell you that I disagree with my president. Uh, oh, well over a year ago, he went over to Turkey, and he said that we're no longer a Christian nation. What? And then he said that we're just a country of principles. No, we're not. I've got to tell you that my family taught me my American heritage, my American history. There's 306 million Americans today, and of that, 85% of the adult men and women profess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Can I ask everybody? Thanks. Amen. Nothing like standing up and telling the truth, right? Can I ask everybody to do me a favor for a minute? If you're a God-fearing Christian man or woman in the room today, would you just stand up for me and put your right hand up in the air? I just want to get an idea for who I'm talking to tonight. Now, just keep your hand up there just for a minute. If by raising your right hand in the air, it means you have a personal relationship with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. I know who I'm talking to now. You know, America was founded as a Christian nation, as Patrick Henry says, not on religions or by religionists, but by Christians and the gospel of Jesus Christ. And for that reason alone, other religions were able to own property. They had asylum here. They could prosper. Now, it wasn't a secret. We carved it in every granite and stone monument, proclaimed it from hilltop to hilltop, wrote it in every document. We started every college and university, proclaimed the gospel of Jesus Christ. We used to have holidays called George Washington's birthday, Abraham Lincoln's birthday. Today we have a generic replacement, President's Day. But I grew up in a New York public school system, and I used to get down on my knees in a public school and pray, and I could look over on the wall and see a picture of General George Washington on his knees praying. The nonverbal communication before 1976 to me and to other American youth was that's what Americans did. We started our day acknowledging Almighty God, his divine providence, the blessings in this country. We, used to, we had the day off, but the day before, the teachers would change the entire curriculum, and they would tell us things about bulletproof George Washington. If you haven't heard that story, you might want to dust it off, start teaching it to your children. And they started telling us things that when George Washington was approached by the Delaware Indian chiefs who wanted to educate their kids in American schools, this is what George Washington said. You do well to want to educate your children in our schools, not to learn reading, writing, and arithmetic, but to learn arts, our way of life, but above all, the religion of Jesus Christ. This will make you a greater and happier people than you are. And then he said that Congress would do everything in their power to assist them in his wise intention. Well, we can't have kids knowing that the first president of the United States was a God-fearing Christian, and that Congress thought it was an excellent idea to teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the majority of people in this room who raised their right hand before and publicly acknowledged Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, in John 15, 4 and 5, Jesus Christ said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me and you'll bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And we've proven that true for over 200 years. Courtesy of the United States Marine Corps, I've lived in over 23 countries, 17 for an extended period of time. And the thing that stu stood out to me more than anything else was that we were a God-fearing nation. We were one nation under God more so than any other nation out there. We have 5.3 million Jews in America. 4.6 million of them say they're strongly connected to Judaism and regularly attend synagogue. That makes us one nation under God more so than any other nation out there. So if we were founded as a Christian nation, allowed freedom of religious expression to everybody that came to our shores, God blessed us more than any other nation, are we not losing our blessings today because we've turned from God? Look around. Even a secular set of eyes can see it. The leaves are curling. That branch over there is dead. We didn't get any fruit over here. Where's our steel industry? We what? Quadrupled our national debt? I'm here to tell you that most God-fearing Americans have fallen asleep on the job for the last 40 or 50 years. We've allowed people to gravitate to positions of leadership and power in industry and education and politics, and they're cutting ourselves off from that vine. And the truth of the matter is, Unless Jesus Christ grafts us back to that vine, we will wither and die as a nation. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. So how do we do that? See, if we go out to our parking lot tonight and we look at our car and my driver's side front tire is half full of air, what's wrong? It needs air. Well, hold on there, Bob. Don't be talking about air. There's people that get offended when you talk about air. You're not allowed to talk about air here. That's what's wrong with the tire. It needs air, and you cannot fix a broken Christian nation without Jesus Christ. Can't be done. You know, 